Hi, and welcome to today's Pinnacle Perspectives video with our equity partner, Corbar Capital Investments. My name is Gerald Williston, and I'm a director at Pinnacle Investment Management. Today, I have joining me Christopher Joy, CIO of Coolabar Capital. How are you, Chris? I'm good, mate. Good to hear. Chris, I'm going to ask you a question about the fixed income diversification myth. One of the most popular yet flawed homilies in fixed income investing is that diversification is universally a good thing. Can you please explain why this is not the case? Well, it's not always universally a good thing, simply put, because I think you find a lot of fixed income portfolios, which might have 150, 300, 500, or 1,000 bonds, are actually loading up on correlated risk. So by that specifically, I mean correlated liquidity risk and correlated default risk. And you only really learn about this, Gerald, in the tough times, in recessions like now, uh, in crises like we saw in March. When that tide recedes, um, you see the illiquidity and you see the stress. And you also learn as to whether portfolios are resilient. And when you open up these portfolios and you look at them line by line, what I have found is you often see a lot of highly pro-cyclical businesses. These are businesses that are always going to face stress at the same time. So, you know, a classic case in COVID-19 uh, has been, you know, sectors such as tourism and travel, uh, like retail, like commercial property, um, and, and so on. Uh, we've also seen a lot of stress, correlated stress amongst non-bank lenders, uh, particularly the risky lenders. Non-bank subprime lenders uh, that are lending to SMEs and residential borrowers. So if you have a portfolio of bonds that has a lot of commercial property, uh, airlines like you know, Virgin and Qantas, airports like Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, non-bank lenders, particularly those who do subprime home loans and SME loans, and retailers like you know, David Jones, you're going to find an enormous amount of illiquidity and a correlated credit risk. And we've seen a massive spike in defaults. We track uh, defaults real time um, around the world, and we have seen a big increase in defaults, Gerald, to the highest levels since around uh, the GFC. So the question is well, what are the alternatives? At Coolabar, we focus not on blind diversification. We focus on uh, building highly liquid portfolios that um, will perform in all climates and that hold credits issued by unquestionably strong businesses. So these are normally businesses that are government guaranteed or implicitly government guaranteed, or they could be really strong oligopolists. So examples are like you know, Macquarie, CBAA, NZ, NAB, and Westpac, some of the regional banks, groups like Woolworths, Coles, Telstra, Optus. We've actually not ever invested in a, we haven't ever invested in a Telstra bond, but we did recently acquire an exposure to a senior ranking um, Optus bond. Optus is wholly owned by Singtel, which is half, done, half owned by Tomasic, which is a, a Singaporean government entity. So these are businesses that don't have really intrinsic default risk, or at least they have extremely low default risk, and they often have access to unique forms of liquidity. And that's why we've been able to be so incredibly active in our portfolios um, in 2020. We've bought and sold $8.6 billion worth of bonds in the last six months. After net selling $417 million in January, we net bought about $937 mil in late February and March, when everyone else was running for the hills and selling assets or trying to sell or sitting there in a static fashion, we were aggressively buying very high grade credit and liquid credit. Since that time, however, as credit spreads have started to normalize, we've aggressively uh, sold. So we've net sold about $900 million since um, the end of March over the period between January and July, we've done eight to 9,000 trades uh, and had absolutely no problems with liquidity at all. 
And that's because we have built portfolios that are unquestionably strong in all periods. And I think March is just such an important stress test for credit investors. Um, and I think you know there's a lot of merit in opening up those portfolios, going through them line by line. And I think most even sophisticated investors would find that you know, in a diversified global credit portfolio, they wouldn't know uh, a quarter to half of all the names. That's probably true of uh, many Aussie credit portfolios. And so the question is, how um, robust are those entities? And what we've found is um, that many of these companies have suffered tremendous stress. So we've seen you know, businesses like Virgin Australia, Neiman Marcus, JCPenney, J. Crew, Hertz, and Europe Wirecard blow up um, these correlated defaults. I might actually just show you our live systems, Gerald, if I can screen share for a moment. So if I go to our quant lab, here you can see these are high yield defaults live, uh, monthly, quarterly, and annually. And we're looking at defaults based on the issuer's credit rating one year ago. And you can see already defaults have spiked above 15, 16 levels and are heading back towards GFC levels. So the point is that uh, investors uh, think they're getting diversification in these 300, 500, 1,000 bond portfolios. But what they've actually discovered in, uh, in March, April, May is that they're not diversified. They actually contain a tremendous amount of pro-cyclical risk. I think that's also why even in the um, fixed income ETF world, you've seen fixed income ETFs uh, in March traded big discounts to their NAVs. In the ETF we run, HBRD, that did not occur. HBRD always traded incredibly closely to NAV. But um, when you have illiquid assets in an ETF that can't be traded or priced, and to be clear, the reason they can't be traded or priced is no one's willing to buy or sell them. So whilst you know we did eight to 9,000 trades over the last six months, almost $9 billion of bonds, and you know, net net across that period, we've done in value terms almost as many sells as buys, um, there's always been a counterpart. There's always been the other side of that transaction. When you're diversifying into you know, a higher yielding credit, particularly, where you get much higher pro-cyclicality and default and liquidity risk, what we see is in those times of stress, there isn't a bid. There is no liquidity. And then when you get redemptions, uh, you know, portfolios have problems. You know, you see those increases in exit spreads um, over protracted periods of time. So, uh, again, our focus has been on highly liquid credit, and we're not trying to drive total returns through yield, which is really the, I think, dominant intellectual paradigm in fixed income. It's always about increasing yield. So you can increase yield through taking more interest rate risk or duration. You can do it through taking more credit risk, uh, so default risk through high yield. Um, or you can do it through taking more illiquidity risk by going into private loans where there is no secondary market. But in cool of us portfolios, we're running typically A-rated credit that's unquestionably strong, that's highly liquid, that isn't necessarily especially high yielding. But by finding those cheap bonds that are going to appreciate in price and exploiting those mispricings, we can generate over time very large capital gains. And those capital gains can substantially augment the yield. It's you know, quite common for us to see in periods that capital gains are more than double the yield um, on the portfolio and thereby increase total returns safely by investing in high-grade assets that are liquid where we're getting, we're getting a lot of alpha and not so much beta. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, for your insights there and perspectives on fixed income diversification. It was quite interesting to note that fixed income diversification becomes counterintuitively risk increasing rather than risk reducing in times of extreme duress like we've seen. If you'd like to learn more about Coolabar Capital, a truly active fixed income manager, please get in contact with a member of the Pinnacle distribution team and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.